George Allen is vexed by a different problem than Tom Landry. His offense is apt to stub its toe, and weekly it must be bailed out by his defense. Allen's nickel defense is lined with interchangeable parts, but laden with one golden player, linebacker Chris Hamburger, number 55. Behind a stunting, looping line, Hamburger blitzes down a path of least resistance and sets the tempo for redskin turnovers. Six weeks ago, Hanberger and his mates grew fat and happy on dumb St. Louis mistakes. And in the rematch, the Cardinals proved just as charitable. Redskin cornerbacks funneled the fleet St. Louis receivers into the middle, where deep help was provided by safety Ken Houston, number 27. With Billy Kilmer injured, the Redskin offense became more daring under Randy Johnson, who tried to strong arm passes to his double covered outside receivers. With the wide receivers denied the sidelines, Johnson found a sure route to success by dumping throws over the middle to tight end Jerry Smith, number 87. This strategy forced St. Louis to shore up the heart of their secondary and set up the old post corner move by trying true Charlie Taylor, number 42. Taylor's role in the Washington offense cannot be overestimated. He is doubly valuable down deep, where his decoy patterns open the field for running backs like Mike Thomas, number 22. The Cardinals, like the Cowboys, don't defeat teams. They outscore them, and most of their games are not decided until the final gun. Against St. Louis, not even a big lead is safe, and when a team denies them the bomb, the Cardinals go underneath, where Mel Gray turns the secondary's cleats into ice skates. St. Louis crept back into the game when Hart connected with J.V. Kane dead in stride for six points as the Cardinals trailed Washington 17-10. With 25 seconds remaining, it was fourth and goal at the seven. Jim Hart pointed to Chris Hamburger, number 55, and alerted his team for a blitz. Hart's plan was to flood the extremities of the end zone with everyone but Mel Gray. The ball, Gray, and Pat Fisher met in simultaneous rendezvous, and so did controversy. While one official indicated an incomplete pass and the Redskins trotted off joyously, the Cardinals collected to dispute the call and circle the officials like wild-eyed Indians around a wagon train. With the Redskins claiming victory and St. Louis shouting tie game, the officials huddled under a full moon where strange things can happen. And suddenly, as Lon Chaney turned into a werewolf, the game turned into a 17-all tie. The Cardinals won the toss and relentlessly trudged after sudden victory as Washington slashed and tore at the ball. At the 20, the game was put in trust to Jim Bakken, whose flutter ball sailed St. Louis into undisputed first place in the NFC East. 